like this, you know, that's Venus, this, that's like Mars. But comets go in orbits that intersect the Earth. Now, what are all these little speckles? Well, this is actually a representation not of a comet, but of a comet that's broken up into shreds. Uh, you know, the famous meteor showers that we have, the Perseid meteor shower, the Leonid meteor shower, those things used to be comets. Uh, and they are comets that no longer exist. Instead, they've broken apart into their little pieces. And the pieces spread out along the orbit. So each of these is little tiny things. And they're all orbiting this way in this elliptical orbit around the sun. And when the Earth gets to here in our orbit, then we get a meteor shower. Well, this was, I'm, I'm not talking about meteor showers, I suppose this, what I'm, I put this up because it's the only view graph I could find of the orbit of a comet, but imagine if there's a comet here, not a whole lot of little dust particles, but a comet in its orbit, and the comet right now, let us suppose, is right here, but we're safe because we're here and the comet's here, so we're going to miss, but maybe the next time around, the Earth will be here when the comet is here, so that's if that was true, we'd be in trouble. Here are some other things that could be a problem. Here's another representation. There's the sun. This circle, this white circle, is the orbit of the Earth. There's the orbit of Mars. Here's the orbit of Jupiter. But here's the asteroid belt, and the asteroids are in these blue orbits, they're in these elliptical orbits. Asteroids drifting real close to the sun and then out again. Most asteroids don't do that. Most asteroids stay in pretty circular orbits out in the asteroid belt. They're not going to hit us. But there are a few which are in orbits that cross the Earth. They're called Earth-crossing orbits. And every one of these things is a danger. Any orbit, any, any asteroid whose orbit goes in here and crosses our orbit is potentially going to collide with us. When this one gets to here, we may not be here. Maybe we're going to be here, but maybe we're going to be here. So any asteroid in an Earth-crossing orbit is a potential projectile aimed right at us. And that's something we maybe should worry about. Here's some pictures of asteroids. This is what they look like. Nobody knew what an asteroid looked like until recently. I mean, when I was growing up, an asteroid was just a tiny little point of light in the sky. No one had the slightest idea what an asteroid looked like. It's only been, I don't know, the last five, ten years that we knew what asteroids looked like. But spacecraft had gone to asteroids now. And these are photographs of asteroids. They're covered with craters. They're not spherical because they're so small that there's not enough gravity to crush them together. Uh, kind of amazing to me. They look so smooth. You know, you would think there's no erosion in space. You'd think they'd be jagged, but they're pretty smooth. And the reason is there really is erosion in space. They're being peppered by micrometeorites all the time. And over billions of years, this smooths them out also produces craters left over from the collisions. They're really fascinating. They're amazing things. How big are they? Well, they're sort of 10 miles across, something like that. I, I think of them as a typical asteroid. One of these things is around the size of New York City. Maybe the size of Manhattan. Something like that. Um, that's not so big, that's not so terrible. We said, remember, we're going 67,000 miles an hour. Uh, they're moving in their own orbits at speeds that are pretty hefty too. So, again, this is... These are the kinds of things we're worried about. What could happen if one hit? Well, here's an example. Here's one example of what could happen if one hit. Anyone been there? This is Meteor Crater in Arizona, or Barringer Crater in Arizona. <laughs> Big hole in the ground. To get an idea of the scale, I think I'm right. These are buildings down there, right? There's buildings yeah. at the bottom? Yeah. These are roads. This collision happens 
in living memory, in historical memory. My understanding is there are Indian Native American myths about you know a big explosion or a fire or something like that. The object that created this hole in the ground was not this big. It was that big. Typically, a crater is caused when when a meteor comes in and hits the ground. The crater it produces is roughly ten times bigger than the meteor is. The reason is the meteor is going so fast uh, that it just makes a big splash. Tiny little meteors burn up in the Earth's atmosphere, and they are shooting stars. I mean, the meteor comes in very high speeds. We're going 67,000 miles an hour. It's going some speed like that. So the combined speed in a head-on collision is enormous. A little tiny meteor just that big, when it hits the atmosphere, burns up. Nothing reaches the ground, and you see this streak, which is a shooting star. Bigger things reach the ground. I always thought that a meteor would be red hot when it lands, and that you know it would light fires. But I understand that meteors are actually quite cool to the touch when one lands on the ground. And the reason is, well, you can do a little calculation, and scientists love calculations. So let me try one right now. If you're going 67,000 miles an hour, for how long is the meteor hot? Seconds. It's hot from the time it hits the top of our atmosphere till the time it lands on the ground. And the top of our atmosphere, well, how high is the top of our atmosphere? The way I think about it is when you're on top of Mount Everest, you're above a good chunk of the Earth's atmosphere. You know, a few people have made it to the summit of Mount Everest without oxygen, but not many maybe half or something like that if the Earth's atmosphere is beneath you when you're on the summit of Mount Everest, that's five miles up in the sky. The summit of Mount Everest is roughly five miles up. So the atmosphere is something like 10 miles up. And if you're going 67,000 miles an hour, how long does it take to go 10 miles? And the answer is no time at all. <laughs> Bam! So the meteor is heated to ferocious temperatures for this tiny fraction of a second. And it's basically cool when it hits. But when it hits, it's going very much faster than the speed of sound, so you don't you don't hear it coming or anything like that. It's going very much faster than the speed of sound in rock. So when the meteor hits the ground, there's an expanding pressure wave beneath it, but the meteor is going faster than the pressure wave. So there's the equivalent of a sonic boom in rock. And before the rock has a chance to get out of the way, the meteor is punching through. So it, it, it burrows deep down into the rock, and then everything explodes. And people have done, uh, with big computers, simulations of what this is like. And more than anything else, it's like a bomb going off underground. It, it's not really like taking a hammer and hitting sand. It's like a, some explosion happening in the ground. It's quite a ferocious event. Now, as I say, this thing was produced by something roughly one-tenth the size, so maybe sort of that big. So that's one. <coughs> just imagine if that were to happen in my backyard or in your backyard. But now let me... This is interesting. Let me read to you something. This is testimony... Uh, this is from the Congressional Record. Testimony of Brigadier General Simon Ward, United States Air Force, before the Subcommittee on Space and Aeronautics, the Committee on Science of the U.S. House of Representatives, in 2002. And I'll just read to you what he said. This is an Air Force <coughs> general. Two and a half months ago, well, this is in 2002, Two and a half months ago, Pakistan and India were at full alert and poised for a large-scale war. When both sides appeared ready, which both sides appeared ready to escalate into a nuclear war. You know, both, both India and Pakistan have nuclear weapons now. The situation has diffused for now. Most of the world knew about this situation and watched and worried. But very 